The physical universe is composed of physical symbols, and those symbols function as mirrors of consciousness. A mirror is a multidimensional device. It generates a reflection of what is already visible. It is multidimensional because mirrors reflect at least one spatial dimension as well as the dimension of time. Looking into a mirror is not much different than how you physically observe reality. Time itself is a kind of mirror. Mirrors simply reflect. True mirrors do not absorb or contain anything relative to their ability to reflect what is already perceivable. A perfect mirror surface is a perfect reflector. It simply reveals what is capable of being observed by the observer. This is demonstrated by conventional mirrors by reflecting light that is already observable. The mirror principle is that everything within reality is a kind of mirror. More precisely, everything within reality is a kind of dimensional mirror. This is analogous to saying that everything within reality is a type of reflection. The diagram provided symbolizes the mirror principle by denoting a regular conventional mirror as equally a mirror as anything else in reality. The mirror principle is demonstrated physiologically through the fact that everything you experience is a result of an empirical brain state. The events and phenomena within your reality only reflect what you already contain, as an experience of your consciousness. From the human perspective, nothing you experience within the physical world is separate from a specific state your brain is in. Everything you hear, touch, taste, smell, etc. is literally a reflection of what you are. The outer reality is but a mere reflection of the inner reality, which, in and of itself, is a kind of paradox. The human perspective is experienced through dimensional mirrors. Reality is experienced through time, which is an overarching dimensional mirror. And this is why reality itself is composed of an infinite array of other mirrors. Every single thing within your reality is a kind of mirror, literally. Every single component of your reality is a mirror. What is being reflected is your consciousness, because if it wasn't the reflection of self, it would by definition not be capable of being experienced. What is being reflected is the experience of consciousness itself. Things, the sky, a broom, a galaxy, an ant, people, atoms, etc., are mirrors. That is what they ultimately exist as. Things are actually, literally, physically, really mirrors. This is not a metaphysical romanticism. Just because things in your reality don't have a chrome reflective surface doesn't make them any less of a mirror than the ones you may find in a bathroom. Things not only reflect light, they reflect the mental and emotional ideas about them you contain. Even this video you are watching right now is a kind of mirror. Letters and words are meaningless symbols you give meaning as a form of consensus belief called language. A fellow human being is a more complex mirror than a simple looking glass, but they are both equally mirrors insofar as they both reflect your experience of self as an observation of reality. People are just like everything else in your reality. They are mirrors of consciousness that reflect yourself back to yourself for an experience. The ability of someone or something to physically do something to you doesn't negate the fact that it is an experience of self. Conventional mirrors are only called mirrors because they show you, in the most obvious way possible, that they are mirrors. Other things in your reality are usually not called mirrors because it's not as obvious to people that they are mirrors. A conventional mirror simply holds the obviousness of being a mirror due to its chrome-like reflective surface. The diagram provided symbolizes the fact that a simple everyday conventional mirror is no less a mirror than the everyday space-time mirror you experience as reality. This isn't to say that things aren't autonomous. The concept to bring to bear is that things are as autonomous as you experience them to be because your experience of them is an experience of self. Things are mirrors because they reflect what you are back to yourself. The infinite amount of events, thoughts, feelings, people, places, and things that you experience in your reality reflect who you are, 
just as a conventional mirror shows you what you look like within that particular mirror. The reflections do not define you, they reflect what you are already defined as. The mirror of time shows you what you are, as a dimensional experience of self. Infinity is the state of being limitless. To be infinite is to have absolutely no limitation with regard to a specific quality. The state of being infinite is the state of being impossible to measure or quantify as finite. It is that which has no end, no limit, and no bounds whatsoever in its quality of existence. Infinity is a concept that is heavily embedded within reality experience. Almost all the components that generate an experiential reality are infinite in some way, shape, or form. Reality itself is an expression of an infinite amount of probabilities and possibilities collapsing into one ultimate experience. That one ultimate experience keeps changing, which thus makes it infinite in quality as well. Time itself is infinite. There may be a limitation to how fast the phenomena in your reality change, but that limitation is only there to create a limited experience and a fixed focus within an unlimited reality. Artistically speaking, the things in your reality that change at a certain rate can be likened to a canvas of which a painting is painted on. It defines the infinite amount of expression that is possible within your reality. The experience of time is still infinite in quality, albeit may be symbolically defined as finite. Within infinity, you will only find more infinity, even if it may appear to be finite. The concept of that which is finite is a definition imposed upon how something that is inherently infinite looks. The concept of something being finite is a definition which defines something as finite. The thing itself is only as finite as you define it to be. This is because the thing is an individuated expression of an infinite amount of other things. Because it is all one reality experience, Things are only as finite as you define them to be. Reality itself is infinite in quality, so whatever thing you define as finite within reality is only as infinite or finite as you define it to be. Reality itself is an experiential definition. The idea of reality being infinite in quality relates to the fact that you can have an infinite amount of experiences of it. The quality of being infinite, with regard to probability and possibility, is the quality of being complete. No experience is missing because there is no limit. The diagram above symbolizes the basic concept of infinity. It is the quality of having no limitation upon that which can be observed. Any number you can imagine upon the number line exists just by being able to imagine it. The act of looking for it will always produce the outcome of it being found because it is an aspect of infinity. The numbers on the number line have no end. This is analogous to reality experience, wherein the act of choosing to observe a particular phenomenon will always produce the outcome of observation. In physical reality, this is demonstrated through principles of physics. For example, if you choose to observe throwing a ball up in the air, you must physically take a ball and throw it up in the air. In this model, the zero works as a kind of mirror, reflecting everything by being defined as nothing. In simple terms, the zero defines all the other numbers on the number line by being nothing. It's a balance point that reflects the other balance point that is infinity. This is analogous to the human experience of time, wherein you only experience one moment that is always changing. The one moment you experience can be likened to the zero's relationship to infinity. The moment goes away before you can actually realize it. Time takes place in the zero now moment. The zero now moment, however, always changes based upon an infinite array of experiences collapsing into one zero now moment. The quality of being infinite is natural to reality. Reality itself is an experience of probability and possibility. Right now is all there is, and is always changing as an experience of time. It is not capable of being limited because it is infinite. The concept of any limitation or any beginnings and endings are always contained within that which is unlimited.
There is no distance or time span separate from here and now. Space-time is an illusionary perspective of here now. The concepts of distance and the ideas of a past or future are just appearances. They make up how your reality appears. The way physical reality is structured makes it appear as if space-time is real in order to have a linear story-like experience. Without this innate quality of illusion, without the appearance of space and time, your reality would be too phantasmagoric to even have the experience of walking down the street. Physical reality experience is very much like virtual reality experience with regard to the illusion of space and time. The illusion of distance within space or time is the result of what appears to be going on. It is a special effect with no actual reality to it. Wherever you go, whenever you go there, you only end up right here and right now because that is literally all that exists. Space-time is like a dimensional flipbook. It is a linear experience of observing change. The fingers that flip the pages of a flipbook are analogous to your consciousness going from parallel universe to parallel universe, generating the illusion of time experience. Reality experience is created through time, and thus the effects of motion, depth, and distance are not real. Each page is a parallel perspective that contains the descriptive information of a total and complete universe. Each page, no matter how similar it may look to the next, has absolutely no relation to the next page, other than what the observer says is going on within the experience of flipping the pages as reality. Each page is just a static picture. There is no motion and nothing is happening within any page whatsoever. No page will ever be able to contain an event because it is just a page. The appearance of events can only be created through multiple pages. Using the flipbook analogy again, the observer's consciousness already contains the entire flipbook. All the information, all the phenomena, and all the parallel universes already exist, just how the entire flipbook already exists. The observer is just flipping through the pages that are most relevant to where its perspective is. If you examine the self-demonstrating properties of space-time, you will find that it is not what it seems. Unrealize the illusion of space and time, and thus perceive the reality of here and now. Space-time is illusion, here now is reality. This diagram illustrates the nature of the here and now, the here now. Space-time is the experiential result of how the past and future seemingly operate. Distance in time and space is an illusion generated from here and now. Space-time is an illusion. Here now is reality. All information exists here and now because information is an experience of one's own consciousness. Within the here now, you only experience one perspective that constantly changes, and each perspective is a format of your existence. You are experiencing the totality of your existence from a distinct perspective. The diagram presented symbolizes this experience. The main focus of this diagram is the black rectangle with the white line going through it. The rainbow rectangle is a magnified version of the white line. The top and bottom rectangles represent an infinite amount of parallel universes. The color black was used artistically to represent the absorption of all information. The black rectangle represents the totality of all reality that exists. The white line piercing through the center of the black rectangle represents the observation of one parallel universe. 
It symbolizes the perspective of the here now that humans observe. The rainbow rectangle represents what is contained within that white line. White light is analogous to the rainbow spectrum, thus rainbow is used. The rainbow represents the full spectrum of electromagnetic energy that is perceivable to humans. The rainbow color of the rectangle was used to represent the reflection of all information perceivable to humans. It represents the idea that all universes exist and are available at once, in one moment. It also represents that the information of the black rectangle is within the rainbow rectangle. All of existence is within each and every parallel universe. The white line symbolizes a collapsed version of the rainbow rectangle. The overall diagram is an artistic way of saying that 99.9 .9 repeating percent of reality is invisible, and yet, paradoxically, the tiny infinitesimal less than 0.01% that is visible contains all the information of the totality of existence. The black rectangle is actually contained within the white line. The absorption of information is being reflected, thus becoming white. The human experience dictates that most physical phenomena that can be touched, tasted, and smelled can also be seen when in large enough physical composites. Even the instruments that are used to see the unseen, by definition, fall into the category of being within that physical bandwidth of perceivable phenomena. All the information is not being observed. The experience of here now is the platform of which the space-time framework is created. The experience of the here now is the fundamental experience of human existence. Existence generates all experiences of consciousness as existence. This is not about theories regarding how our physical universe came into existence. This is about the primordial attribute that is existence itself. This concept of existence can be used to describe how anything exists. Whether you are talking about a loaf of bread, a galaxy, a caterpillar, or a mountain, if it exists, then it holds the attribute of existence being described. There is only existence. Non-existence does not exist. Existence can only do two things. Existence can only exist, and existence can only change. Non-existence can only do the opposite. It can only not exist, and it cannot change. Existence is experienced through change as an experience of time.